In this video, we'll be using what's called a component script uh, to accomplish the task that we did manually by unpacking, editing the rig, repacking, and then configuring the control. So we'll just take a copy of this guy. Here is our asset. And what we want to do is use an Apex Auto Rig component. We'll feed that in. And we're going to use this second input, and it's helpfully labeled component script. So when we feed the component script into this second input, we will then change the component to use second input. So first, let's set this up. We want to use an edit graph but we're not going to feed anything into it. We're going to create something completely new and independent that is then going to be injected into our rig because our auto rig component is looking for our base rig. And when we sw we'll switch this over to use second input, it's going to bring uh, the graph that's in this edit graph into the component and apply it to our rig. So to start off, we are faced with our completely uh, empty graph. So what do we need? Well, we need inputs and outputs. So let's just see what we have in the tab menu. If we type input, we'll get an input. And we want to rename this parms. Uh, this is sort of a keyword within Apex. And similarly, if we look for output, we'll find an output. So we're going to bring some information in, we're going to do something to it, and then we're going to send it out again. But what is it that we're going to work on? Well, we've been talking about this all along, and that is our rig. So how do we get our rig into this network in order for us to be able to work on it. Well, again, the tab menu will help you here. Um, if we just type rig, we've got lots of rig things, so that's not all that helpful. But what if we want to extract a rig? That's a better word. If we type extract character graph, that sounds like something that's very useful. We are editing a graph, so we want to grab that graph. And the edit character graph um, has a number of inputs and a number of outputs. Well, if we're extracting a graph, then we need to get the character, again, from our packed folder. This is our entire character. And the next thing we need is the graph name. It's called graph name here, and that will be the name of the input. But we're going to middle click this, and we're going to change this to rig name. Rig name is kind of a keyword, um, and so uh, this graph will automatically grab our rig. And in this case, that's here, our base rig. We could have named this you know, anything we wanted, uh, but then we would have to manually input the name of the rig into that parameter. So rig name will do that for us. So now we have a character, we have the rig name, and we are extracting the graph from that. And it's this graph that we're going to do work with. And then we're going to update the graph and send it out. So if we're going to update this graph, we probably need, if we type update, we can see we have update character element, and right below it, update character graph. So we can place that down. And then it, it's just a question of matching these up. Well, we want our character to flow through to character and out. And then graph name, becomes graph name. And then here, 
if we just pipe this through, we're sending the graph that we extract into an update, but we haven't done any work, so nothing will change. And then we're sending the character out. And now, if we hook this up into the second input, we can display this. And instead of use snippet or any of the other components that we're using, we're going to be using our custom component. So we're going to use second input. And if we do that, you can see that absolutely nothing has changed. Why is that? Well, we've injected this bit of rig logic into this auto rig component. But currently, this rig logic is doing nothing. It's finding the character and the character rig name. It's extracting the graph. It's updating the graph. And then it's sending it out. So it's not doing anything. But we've confirmed that everything works. There's no errors. In fact, we can put a scene animate down. And we can confirm that everything is working as normal. So that's good. So what then do we want to do in this graph? Well, if you remember the previous video, all we did was we found that joint called uh, barrel root, and we promoted its scale parameter. Simple enough. So how do we do that in the graph? We saw how we were able to wire it up manually, but we don't want to do that uh, because this is a, just a very simple example of something that could be much more complex, uh, much more involved. So we want to be able to create that logic here in a very hands-off way and in a re reusable way. So we're going to be manipulating this graph and what in the graph do we want to look for? Well, we want to find a node. We want to find that barrel root node. So let's just see what we got. Find graph find node. We are working with the graph and we want to find a node. So graph find node is the one that we want. And we can see that this node is asking for a graph and a path. And it's going to output a node ID. So we'll see what we do with that later, but clearly we need to feed the graph into this so that the find node operator can look into this graph. But what about this path? If we mouse over it, we'll see that it's looking for a string. Well, that's clearly just the name of a node. So we can promote that. We can take this path pop it into next and it says path. And if we select our rig component, we can come way over to the right hand side. We can see this refresh icon. And if we click that, it'll ask us if we want to update the current component parameters. Yes, we do. It spits out this, spits out this little console thing. I think that's just a, a beta thing. We can clear that and close. But now on our auto rig component, we can see that we have this field called path and we can put whatever we want in here. What we're going to put in there is the joint name that we want to look for. But path is a little ambiguous. So let's change that from path to joint name. Come back to our auto rig component refresh the interface and now we have joint name let's just fill that in right now barrel root that's the joint that we want to find and here in our rig we know that that i think is right here yeah so we're asking this bit of logic once it's injected into here to find this node and then we're going to promote that scale parameter. So we go back to our component script. So if everything has gone right, and I think that it has, we've provided a joint name, we've provided a graph, and we've put down a graph find node. So we can kind of assume 
that this has worked. Now that we've found the node, we need to find the port that we want to wire, in this case, the scale input. So let's see if we can find a port. So graph find port. Perfect. Graph find port is looking for a graph, and we know how to wire that in from here. And it's also looking for a node ID. Well, that's what we've just created using the find node. So we can wire that in. And then now it's looking for a port name. And the difficulty here is that how do we tell find port that we're looking for an input and not an output? Well, if we hit P in this network, we can see the parameters for the port name. And what we can do is we can say, well, S for scale, and then we can give it square brackets and we can differentiate between input or output. So we'll put in, so S in, that will be scale in. So now we've extracted a graph, we've found a node within that graph, and then we've used find port to find a specific port on that node. In this case, scale in. And now we want to promote oops, graph promote input. So if we put that down, it's looking for a port ID, which we can get right from that port that we just made. It's looking for a graph. So we can give it that graph. Just space these out a little more. And it's also looking for a parameter name. And that's going to be the name that we use um, on this parms. So just like we have uh, front leg IK target S, uh, we can specify the name of this. Because if we just sort of wire this up as is, um, we'll get something that's not quite um, indicative of no enough. We want to really be able to tell uh, the user what kind of parameter they're dealing with. So again, this is a string, and we have the joint name. So we could just put that into the parm name. But what would happen is that in our controls, we'll just get the joint name here, but there won't really be any indication that it's to be used for scaling. So instead, we're gonna modify the string that comes out of this joint name. And the way that we can do that is with a string format node. So we can take the string that we've put for joint name can put that into the argument input. And then if we look at this format string, we have a field here where we can um, specify how we want to manipulate the string, how we want to format it. And this is uh, in the documentation. But if we put curly braces, uh, the curly braces will be whatever this string is. So right now, we're not actually doing anything. But we can add an underscore s. And now, whatever string comes in for joint name will be reformatted and given an underscore s. And now this result we can feed into parm name. So now all we have to do is connect the graph that we've edited here and put that into the update character graph. Get rid of these parameters. So this then, these four nodes are the, uh, the things that we are doing to our graph. So we're extracting the graph, doing some stuff, and then updating the graph. And 
sending that character out. And if we select our auto rig component, we go and try and find, here he is, barrel root, we can see right away that the scale parameter, the scale port, has been wired, and hopefully it's been wired to the right spot. Here on our parms barrel root underscore s. So that's exactly what we wanted. We've taken that joint name that we provided on the auto rig component. We've appended that underscore s with the string format. So that's the name that it's been given. If we look now in our scene animate, we have to reset all. And we look, there we go, barrel root right down there at the bottom. And if I select that, sure enough, it works. But again, we don't have a, a visible control. So we can just steal this one that we made earlier. where we put a box wires that was red, and then we can update that, and there we go. Now we have a control that we can select, and we can use to animate uh, that little shooting effect. So again, uh, this is a very simple example, and I think it's worth uh, seeing a very simple example because while it's simple, it does contain all of the elements uh, that you'll be doing no matter how complex the script is. Uh, because these four nodes uh, suit our purpose, but it could be something really very complex. We could be finding not just one node, but many nodes, uh, and we could be wiring uh, nodes together in different ways, depending on whatever rig logic we're trying to create. Uh, but whatever we're doing, uh, we have to do it very specifically. Uh, we're finding specific nodes, we need to find specific ports, uh, we need to promote those properly. Um, all of that is very, very explicit. And all of that is being done to the graph. And then once we're done, we need to update that graph and send it out. And so now this, uh, this node here, we could save this off uh, and reuse it uh, if this logic was applicable to other rigs. Uh, certainly if it was more complex, uh, you could use it for all kinds of things. Uh, and that kind of logic, you know, this little four node network here, is very much what all of these are. So when we saw the, um, the FK transform and the multi IK, these are all exactly this. It's a little piece of logic that is then being injected using this auto rig component node. So we're really just replicating um, what these do, but with our own logic. So hopefully that gives you um, a good taste of the kind of workflow that you'll have um, using the graph. In the next videos, we'll be looking at, again, how to do all of this, uh, but with Apex Script.